Hello, and welcome back to another Zim Explorer. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to further take a look at NFTs. So I'll show you minting another NFT. They're so much fun, and I thought we could um, see some techniques as we go here. So uh, let's have a look. Whoa, there it is. Nice. Do you like? Yeah. So let's see how this was made. First of all, you can move your mouse around so it's an interactive NFT like that. And if you press, then it stops following your mouse. We press again and it'll move to your mouse. And it's kind of, it's called Candy Cone. It's like a fountain of pixel mm, yummies. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so let's hide this then. Yeah, reduce it down there and move it on over here. Here's the code. So we're making our candy cone folder here. Uh, the only asset we have is an animated GIF of that, GIF. And then we've got the, brought the scripts in. And you can follow the format in the, uh, not the Dan Zen one, what was it? The uh, Zim NFT one. So all that's in NFT. Where's the Zim one? Right here. So you get a zip file that shows you the scripts. In that zip file, we put all the scripts just loose in scripts. And there's the NFT animated GIF there. Uh, in since then, we've been putting our scripts in. Just kept them the same. That's the uh, the CreateJS folder. There's CreateJS. Here's the Zim NFT. There's zero zero, and, and that stuff. Oh, that was the Darklow one. Um, in this one, we also brought in the pizzazz. So we're basically keeping the CDN the same. But you can do it in any way. It doesn't matter. You can follow that zip file and do it that way if you want. OK, so all we're doing is bringing in then zim NFT, like so, and the pizzazz. Uh, back in the zip file, I think it's slightly different. Let's open it up. Uh, scripts slash zimjs is all we're bringing in. If you take a look in the zim.js one, it's calling create.js from scripts and it's calling zim.min from scripts. So this is called zim crystal. It was our sort of way of shortcutting it so that when you're in your app, you only have to call one file. And then the one file you call calls this stuff. Okay, so we're on our candy cone one though and our one file right there calls all the CreateJS and Zim stuff but we still have the pizzazz which is giving us this pixel format that uh, that we'll see. So I usually put a description in the NFT right here and then I use that same description for in Hicketnunk or, or wherever. We're bringing in a new frame. For this one, we've turned our GPU onto true. To get to the GPU, it's it's a distant parameter, so we went to the Zim Duo technique. So rather than just our normal way of passing in fit 900, 900 black darker or whatever, which are the first four par five parameters, that would be fine. And then after that is assets, and then path. Um, but anyway, uh, blah 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 blah. We have to finally get to GPU. We'd have to put in a bunch of nulls or undefines in there, and then finally get to GPU. So we've turned to the Zim Duo technique of a configuration object, a squiggly bracket, where we put the parameter names and their values like that, and then we can go to GPU directly here without having to worry about all those nulls. If we're using GPU then every object needs to be cached or a bitmap. If it's a bitmap, it's already a bitmap. Caching it will turn it into a bitmap, and that way the GPU can show it. Now you can set up one frame with a, a GPU and set up a frame on top of it that say navigation that isn't GPU, that's your normal buttons and stuff, because buttons you would have to, it's a pain in the neck. Uh, if you have a button, um, uh, your rollover isn't very easy. <laughs> If at all possible, uh, because once you've turned it, once you've cached it, you'll no longer see the rollover change it to a different color, for instance. So usually what you would do is you would rely on the GPU to handle all the, the heavy lifting in terms of any graphic manipulation, but your interfaces would sit up on top on a different frame, a second frame. So that can be done. It's not that hard to do. 
All right, so when our frame is ready, but we don't have any interfaces, really. Let's see that again. All we've got, we've got that Z, but um, we can't even click. For uh, an NFT, you can't click out to Zim or anywhere that's not a um, an allowed uh, domain. Uh, and there's not very many do allowed domains. So usually that would be a link to Zim, but for the NFTs, it's just a visual thing. And so... We've cached it, and um, that's there in the corner. All the emitter is cached, as as we'll see soon, and so is the pixel effect that's that's also cached. So well, let's see what we did. We've made when the frame is ready. We've made an emitter that is a new rectangle, and given that rectangle uh, a dimension as a square. You can also randomize right in here, but the problem is if you randomize like this, min colon 20, max colon 40, if you randomize like that, the other one won't necessarily get the same number and you don't end up with a square anymore. <laughs> it's like, darn. So one way to do it would be to just call a function here and have the function up here. And in that function, declare a random number say between 20 and 40, and then pass that same random number into both the width and the height of the rectangle and carry on. And, and then just put the name of the function right in here. So that's easy enough to do as well. Uh, but alternatively, we can set it to a specific size. Uh, I don't know if you notice, but these are actually coming out at different sizes. So some are small and some are big. Um, we can set it to a different size and what's causing that is this random right here. So the random parameter allows you to pass in any property and then pass in um, how we want to randomize that. For instance, a min and a max. That's one way. Okay, and so we're, that will end up making the rectangle between 20 and 40 because we're having a min of 0.5, which would be 20 and a max of 1, which would be 40. We're also randomizing the force there, so some of them push out a little bit more, and that's what gives us, in the emitter, that's what gives us uh, a night, instead of going all to the same height, if we had the same force every time, basically go all to the same height. We are randomizing the angle a bit, and so the angle will adjust the height slightly, but um, basically this is at 8, the forces and this is at six the forces down here so we're getting this nice plumage i guess of the cone uh, because randomizing that we've got a gravity set to lower than normal which sort of allows this to kind of float a little bit uh, where we've got a life that's set for longer so if your gravity is lower than normal that means it's going to float in the air a bit longer that means you probably need a longer life normally the life i think is just two second life or it might be one second life uh, that's actually the default interval we tried some different speeds but um, we liked uh, having a fair amount coming out uh, so that when we move move around we can get a, a nice stream of them if you reduce that when you move it sort of doesn't look quite like a stream anymore The angle is normally would like shoot out everywhere. Uh, so what we've done is up is minus 90. So we went up and then minus 15 from straight up. And then the maximum is up plus 15. So we're either going 15 degrees to the left of up or 15 degrees to the right of up. And we're caching. If we don't cache, we won't see it. By default, the Zim emitter doesn't cache. It pools, and, and therefore it will reuse the um, a certain amount of things. You know, after 50, you can set the pool amount. But uh, usually we don't have to cache. It's not that noticeable. Uh, but sometimes if you've set the life for longer, uh, we can get more performance if we set it to GPU. And there we've got the, the cache true. We've centered it, moved it down to start. And then we've set up a motion controller here that um, is motion controlling the emitter. 
That's neat. Back in Zim, I don't know, I can't remember which one, Zim Hep or something like that at some point, Zim Neo, we made the emitter work differently. It used to be that the whole emitter would follow, including the particles. So what would happen is all the particles would sort of move as you moved. Well, that's not quite natural. So once it's emitted, you want those particles that are already emitted to not be affected by motion. And that's what's giving you this nice uh, motion, you know, realistic effect. So um, that's good. So we can move the emitter with the motion controller and anything that's already been emitted will stay, you know, won't be affected by the motion controller. And we're doing that on mouse move and setting the speed. If you don't increase the speed, you're going to get uh, a slower feel to it, which is actually quite beautiful too. There it is, sort of moving slower towards um, what we're, we're asking for. But uh, that's with damping, and you can reduce, reduce the damping as well. But the motion controller has a speed. And so we've set the motion controller to be nice fast. Instead of 10, which is the default, is 10. Now it almost goes immediately there. But there's still some damping. You can get rid of that completely and just have it follow directly. But I kind of like the damping on that. So the damp is at the default of 0.1 or whatever the damp is. If you wanted to change that, you would have to get to the damp parameter, which means maybe going to the Zim Duo technique here and getting to the damp parameter more easily. Then when we stage mouse down, we're pausing the motion controller uh, or setting the motion controller to not if it's if it's paused, so that's that's a way to basically toggle motion controller. Actually, come to think of it, I think the motion controller has a toggle. Let's just check that. Uh, docs. Most things that can be paused have the toggle motion. So we would look under the methods. Pause, immediate, convert, and dispose. No, it doesn't. So uh, motion controller doesn't have a toggle. We just pause at, uh, it's got a property here. Somewhere in the property is a paused property right there. Read only, true if paused. Okay, so that's how you can toggle a motion controller is uh, run the pause method on it and pass it a not version of whether it is paused. <laughs> um, the pixel effect, if we don't have the pixel effect, this looks like our traditional motion controller where we've got a bunch of colored rectangles, which is also neat. But I'm quite happy with the uh, effect of the pixels. So pizzazz is a way that you can make various patterns. One of those patterns happen to be pixels. And I can show you what this really looks like. If we change this to say white, like that, we can see what pizzazz is doing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so pizzazz has made a bunch of pixels. And then what we're doing, pick, those patterns can be animated. Uh, but an easy way animation remakes them. And that, that can be a little bit, when, when you get a lot of pixels remaking them all the time, can be a little slower. I actually didn't try it with the GPU, but I know on the CPU, you, you it would affect the emitter's performance if you are constantly remaking uh, thousands of pixels like that. So with GPU, it might not um, cause a problem. But uh, what we've done to sort of fake it is we've center regged our pattern, which is square, 120 by 120. We've center regged it, and we've made sure that uh, the mouse isn't operating on that. If the mouse is operating on that, it's going to, you know, try and roll over a thousand of those things, and that slows it down too, and set its alpha down so that we can see the uh, emitter stuff underneath. But here's our trick every 0.1 seconds, we're just rotating that 90. So we're not remaking it. We're just rotating, uh, you know, tit, 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 rotating that. And that's what's giving that, that pixel effect. And when it's on dark, it's quite nice. 
So uh, black, some black, we refresh here. And now we can only see that, that the pixels on the boxes that were, it kind of looks to me anyway, it almost looks like they just happen to be pixelated. So that's nice, because this is kind of like pixel art without having to worry about all the pixel art <laughs> kind of stuff that you'd have to do to get that to work. <laughs> and this is live, so many people are doing pixel art with a video, and that's, you know, I don't I don't know if they're affecting the pixel art in, in Premiere or something, or After Effects afterwards or something like that. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But uh, to do it live like this is... It's another thing. You could probably code little pixels and this it would work just fine, but it would be probably harder to code a rectangles filled with their own little pixels. And I think this is kind of a, a neat effect. Yay. All right, so that's that's the app itself there. And where'd we get to? Uh, there's our interval. So that's at the very end. We make an icon and we make sure to cache the icon so that we can see that. Otherwise, that icon is made up of shapes and you wouldn't see it. Do you want to see not seeing it? <laughs> so there it is without the cache. And we go in here and we refresh. And here's what it looks like. It just doesn't show up. Okay, so anything, if you're GPU, you got to make that show up. If we didn't have GPU, bup, 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 bup. Here's what it looks like. And come back here and we refresh. So there's Zim shows up now. Uh, you know, the performance is probably fine. It's not bad. But I did notice that in a couple places it just sort of slowed down a bit and then sped up a bit. And then a little bit later it slowed down a bit and sped up a bit. Uh, here it's I can't really tell the difference too much. Uh, another thing that I did note, though, is the pixel movement in here is about half the speed as to when you do it in the GPU. So that not rotating that thing 90 uh, is really whipping around. Let's see if we can notice the difference. So we'll bring it back to uh, white here and, and see if you guys can see the difference. Maybe I'm imagining it. So there it is. That's without the GPU. That's kind of like da 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 feel. Okay, let's try it with the GPU. Like so. Bring it in here and we refresh. Yeah, I would say that that's that's faster. And I get the feeling as I move this around of better performance as well as I kind of wiggle this back and forth. Actually, I didn't wiggle much last time. Um, let's let's try some wiggling. So there I am wiggling it in the GPU. I'm just like going really fast back and forth and it seems to wiggle fairly, fairly nicely. And we comment out the GPU. So now this will be not GPU. Refresh. Ah, I'm getting just about as much wiggle. It's not quite it's not quite there. I'm kind of going back and forth and it doesn't really reach the edge as much as it did before. But I normally you wouldn't really notice it either, but I think there is a slight improvement on on the GPU and that's why I chose to do the GPU cuz we didn't uh, there, there's nothing to prevent us from doing it, so why not do it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not getting it over to the edge as well. <laughs> Maybe I'm imagining it all. <laughs> but anyway, there's the GPU back on. Let's change back to black. And uh, we will then be ready to um, do our NFT, which you're probably waiting for. Okay, yeah, let's do our NFT. Oh, we need to bring that cache back as well. Down here at the bottom. Cache. I've already zipped up the file. I'm all ready. So next thing you would do is you would zip up this whole directory of um, the candy cone directory. Just zip it. Make sure you have your animated GIF in there. Let's see that. The animated GIF does work. I don't know why Adam gets mixed up sometimes. So that's an animated GIF. I try and keep those around a megabyte. Um, these 
you know, on Hicket and Unk, it shows it shows these of from from everybody's stuff, and it's just this big long list of things. So if if you make a three megabyte file or five megabyte file, it's just a bit of a pain in the neck. You're causing that to be loaded. So I I try and keep it down to about a megabyte. Um, and so there it is. Unfortunately, the quality of it isn't great, but you, you get the idea, I suppose, I hope. I do keep around a bigger one. One that Usually what I try and do is I hope that I can get like an 800 by 800 animated GIF working. <laughs> I did in the beginning. They weren't very long, you know, or not much was happening. And I, I was able to get a fairly nice animated GIF. But for when a lot of stuff is happening like this. It was three megabytes to make a five, an 800 by 800. So I cut that in half roughly or whatever this is and it dropped it to a megabyte. So I keep the bigger one though and I'll post the bigger one on Twitter because I don't care how much. <laughs> I actually don't like Twitter that much, but I don't care how much Twitter tries to put through. I'm <laughs> sure sure they can handle it. So I'm, I'm happy giving them a, a three megabyte animated GIF of better quality because usually they'll make it crappy quality anyway. Um, all right, so there, there's the asset in there. And what that asset does, just a reminder up top here, is you're supposed to, for Hicket Nunk, put that in there. And we've got that in the Zim the Zim NFT example, it's basically pointing to an animated GIF that will be used uh, whenever it needs to. And that's sort of weird because we also uplate, upload an animated GIF, or we upload the animated GIF as well, but for some reason they want it in the file as well. So be it. Don't forget your title. Don't call it something like Zim code creativity, which is the, the default. Okay, so make sure you give it a good title. And if you're using the Zim NFT, don't use the Zim NFT title. Make make your own title. All right. Uh, other than that, I think we're good. And once again, all of your stuff needs to be local. So this is pointing to a scripts directory, which is right here, and the stuff is in here. You can grab something like Pizzazz from the CDN. Just show you where that is. Go to the docs. So you would go to the Zim site and then hit docs like that and at the top of the docs here's extra code socket game physics 3 pizzazz 1 2 and 3 there it is so that's pizzazz 3 you can just grab it from from here or you can go back to zim and under code here like that go to cdn so this is the cdn right here and the cdn has a listing of all the files so here are individual files for zim and if you scroll down there, there's three JS ones. Here's Pizzazz, there's Pizzazz 3, Pizzazz 2, Pizzazz 1. So right there is Pizzazz. And you arrive there as well. So just file, save as, uh, save as, and then save that in um, wherever you want to save it in your NFT folder in the script. Okay, so I just saved it right there in the scripts uh, and then pointed to it in the scripts. There's also physics, for instance. If you do physics, you can grab a Zim physics, underscore physics, it looks like this. And so that's a crystal to physics, but you'll have to go into the, you'll have to grab the crystal, physics. You'll have to grab the crystal and kind of bring all the, the files local. Let's see, what do we make with physics? Um, crystal cloud right here. So under scripts, we have, there's Box2D, so you'll have to get Box2D. Well, and I've kept that in, in the same sort of folder as the, that, that, that will match the CDN version of Box2D. And then under NFT, there's uh, Zim Physics, there's Min. Um, you also need to bring in Physics and Game locally. So anyway, it, uh, if you need a hand with any of that, just let us know on Slack or Discord and we can help you compile those files. But basically you just look, the idea is you look at Zim Physics and you say, oh my goodness, Zim Physics is calling CreateJS, Zim Physics is calling the Zim Min, Zim Physics is calling Box2D, Zim Physics is calling Zim Physics, and Zim Physics is calling the game. Now by, by default, the Zim Physics assumes that you might want a game, and indeed for this one, we did. We wanted uh, a score or a timer, you know, that often comes along with physics because you're making games. 
not all the time, but uh, we threw that in there by default. So that means you would turn, all these would be pointing to the Zim site. So if you were going to go look at Zim physics uh, for real, it normally looks like this. Mm, NFT, zero, zero. There's Zim physics. So normally all of these point to the CDN. Well, we're off on zimjs.com or zimjs.org, <laughs> zimjs.com slash org, uh, zimjs.org, and that's our CDN. So you have to make local versions of these. You, you can't be calling out remotely like that. So you would just look at what Zim Physics does, go get these things, and put them all in a script directory. That's what I did. All right. Uh, remember as well, any of the Zim files that are up there, like um, let's go look at the CDN, or not the CDN, but the NFT of that. So for instance, here is Hicketnunk. And here are uh, my assets. So here's the cloud one, for instance. That's the one that was using the physics. Right, that's loud. Okay, so you're pressing here and try not to hit the speed up. Oopsies. You hit the top. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> anyway, and now it starts to speed up a bit as we go through these pathways. Oh, I'm just playing off. I like to make it noise. How much noise can you make? One way to play this game actually is see uh, how low a score you can get and still make it to the end. Because the problem is, if I hit something like this, it pulls it back and all of a sudden... Oh no. Poor Crystal Cloud. Oh. Okay, so anyway, you can take any of these things and go to the bottom where it says View on IPFS. So once I click there, this is it on the interplanetary file system, and I can right-click and view page source. At which point you've got a bunch of interplanetary file system stuff, but underneath that is the ZIMP code. So there's how this game was made. I mean, I don't know about you, but you should marvel at the fact that this is only a scroll or two to play that, <laughs> play that game. Zim is really cool. Zim works well. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can then take a look here at what we're calling a scripts folder, NFT. If I click that, there's the JavaScript that that is there. And all these things are in the scripts folder right in here. So there's scripts. I don't know what happens if you take away that. actually shows you. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so it doesn't hide what files are in there. So when I type script, there are the files that are in there. You can just go and download them all. They're not really this big um, because they're gzipped usually. So they appear, appear that big in file, but I think gzip like makes it about a third the size. So, so there you go. That's all that stuff. However, we're wanting to make our own Here's the candy store. Oh, nice. Do we get that working again? I think it should show up. Yeah, there it is with the, the Zim icon. Thought about moving, dragging the Zim icon around. If I were just making a Zim thing, that might have been fun. But, uh, you know, we're, we're doing this twofold. One is because these are beautiful art NFTs. Um, two, because we want to show people what you can make with Zim and encourage people to try and also create with Zim. So that's why we put that in there. Hopefully it's not too bothersome for collectors. I hope not. I consider it sort of part of the art, almost like a signature. Um, okay, so let's make the NFT now of this. Yay, on the Zim Explore. And so I'll... Um, pull up. I had, I had one started already, and then I thought, hey, maybe we should show you this again. So this is Hicketnunk, and when you go to Hicketnunk, I better do it over here. When you go to Hicketnunk, and you connect it to your wallet, so you've got to get a wallet. We do the Kukai wallet, and all that is described on the Zim site under NFT here. So hit that little triangle, and all of how to get a wallet, so making a Zim NFT, 
that stuff. Getting a wallet in Tezos. Uh, there you go. This stuff is pretty easy. And just ask Dr. Abstract, that's me, to send you a Tezo. <laughs> Five bucks. <laughs> I'll send you, send you a Tezo. There you go. Hopefully you'll you'll come back and buy some, uh, like the Zim NFT. That's the idea. You want to buy the Zim NFT. It's only 0.1 Tezos. So you have plenty of leftover to, you know, mint some yourself. And we want you to be able to mint. So that's nice. It's uh, we're, we're happy to do that. It's not like we're getting thousands of people. If we got thousands of people, well, we'd still be happy. <laughs> but we might get, maybe we'll send you half a Tezo instead. Um, but there anyway, if you want to get your own Tezos, then you can get some Bitcoins and convert them to, to Tezos. Uh, I'm in Canada, so I have to use Newton. Newton is... Um, it's not even an exchange. I don't know. It's just a way that I can give credit card money and get Bitcoins. Then I go to an exchange, which is called Binance, I guess, Binance, and exchange the Tezos for, or sorry, exchange the Bitcoin for Tezos. And then I can put those Tezos in my wallet. All that's pretty easy once you get used to it, but it's... <laughs> All this stuff isn't terribly easy to start. You know, it takes you a day to figure out what's going on. Mind you, I hope I've helped out. There's a there's a Zim Explorer on how to do all that stuff. So make sure that you look back at the Zim Explorer and, and get yourself a wallet. Okay, so you can do that stuff. Uh, there are the two the two videos um, that will help you do that. And once you do that, get the Zim NFT. So it's it's basically free. It's like point one Tezo. And uh, you can get that. Another one that would be nice for you to get. Here's here's uh, a link to the Zim NFTs, and maybe one day you'll get some. Maybe you'll be making some money. You're always welcome to come back here and 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 collect any of these Zim NFTs. But uh, this one is cheap. But this one's expensive. This one's a hundred Tezos, so that's like. Five hundred dollars or something like that. You're, it's we put it expensive like that on purpose. This one's really cheap. This one's like 0 0.1 Tezo. So if you want a nice one, Jelly Flirt is very beautiful. I love I love these. I think they're gorgeous. If you press on that, it shows you how how they were made, and they have nice poetry that comes along in the bottom here. So that's that's called um, Jiving Jelly, and this one's Jiving Jelly Flirt. And if you press on it, it's sort of uh, there, it's a very simplified version of it. You press it again, it comes back and starts. <laughs> it's quite, quite exciting. And once again, there's all the, the Bezier curves from the blobs that went to putting that together. You see how it animates? We're animating the Bezier curves in various ways and uh, causing all of that stuff to animate like so. So that's also 0.1 Tezos, which is not very much. If I give you, um, if I give you five or give you a Tezo, then you get lots left. It doesn't really cost much to mint. We're going to see some of that, so let's carry on. All right. So that those are some examples of what we've been making at the Gadget Minters. And if you make this kind of stuff too, join us as a Gadget Minter. So here's the Gadget Minters information right here. There's actually a whole page on it. Well. <laughs> page on its own. <laughs> there we go, the, on the gadget minters. So if you're using Zim, maybe you are making gadgets. Most of the NFT world aren't really making gadgets. They're, they're making perhaps interactive works, but they're sort of more like generative art that you press on and it might give you another pattern or possibly it might follow your mouse. Usually not even. Usually it's just a press on this and something happens. Sometimes they might have um, some controls to be able to adjust the generative art. But we're embedding our controls to make that all very beautiful. And so have a look here at uh, some of those. And if you are doing the same thing, then join us as a gadget minter. We can buy each other's. That supports. If I buy yours for the same price you buy mine, we basically don't lose any money. And we both made sales, which uh, looks good to the outside world. <laughs> you know, hey, this is selling. <laughs> also, uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll grow. We'll become better. People will start collecting us and uh, at that point uh, we make money because we've bought each other's and we can then um, you know sell that for for more later on that's the idea win-win scenario all right so back in Hicket Nunk um, once you get a wallet and you connect yourself to the wallet then uh, you can go to that little menu and choose OBJKT that's to mint an object 
we were looking earlier at managing assets. And if you hit manage assets, that, that lists all of your assets. Here's what you've all collected, or what I've, what I've collected. So here, here are the, the NFTs right on Hicketnunk. These are the animated GIFs that I was talking about. So they're, they're not too big here. The problem is, is when they, when they actually show up on Hicketnunk, they might be, uh, sometimes they're the right size, but sometimes they're really large like this. And I don't know, I guess it's all right. So that's, uh, that's Hicketnunk itself. Anyway, we're going into the OBJKT to mint an object. And what that looks like is this page right here. So I've already got it started. Here's the title. Here's a description of what uh, that is. And that comes from those comments that I had made. Tags. So uh, make sure you tag the fact that it's made with Zim.js. Uh, maybe even tag a Zim. So Zim and Zim.js. That will help us find other ones that are made with Zim. Processing is the most common one for interactive NFTs or for generative art anyway. Uh, but processing doesn't have components. It doesn't have a lot of the things that we have in Zim to make, you know, more like tools to make art. Processing is more like, hey, let's make the art. Zim is more like, hey, let's make the tools to let other people make the art. Um, so stick that in there in the tags if you wouldn't mind. And then as, as we grow, we'll be able to find other Zim works. The additions is how many of these you want to sell. I kind of just started off saying I'm going to make 10. And, and I sort of kept that as my standard. Uh, but I've adjusted a little bit. I have a lot of these puzzle NFTs uh, that come from the Zim uh, scrambler. And I can make them like in 40 minutes or less. Uh, and I've got lots of them. So I'm making one edition of each one. And that helps people sell it. They say, oh, I've got the only one. So I'm going to sell it. If there's 10 of them, it's like other people might try and sell it for less. So I'll have to wait until <laughs> I can sell it for how much I want. So that's a little bit tricky. Uh, the royalties are how much you're going to get back. I don't think that people really pay attention to royalties, so you may as well put it up a little bit higher. I started at 10%, then I went to 15 per, for a while, then I realized it's just if other people sell, you get the royalty. And as, as more and more sell, sales happen, you, the royalties come to you. Like I said, I don't think people really pay too much attention when they're buying to the royalties. They might if they're you know pro and they're working with a lot, a lot of money, but... For the most part, I don't think they pay attention, and it's not too bad for um, the artist to get 20% royalties, for as I'm concerned. Uh, they made the art. So uh, you can even go higher on that, I think. I can't remember. There is a limit. Uh, and now we upload the OBJKT. I don't think I have zipped it yet. Uh, I can't remember. So let's zip it together then. So, well, I can check here, I suppose. Directory and it's Crystal Cloud. Here's Candy Cone right there. And if I scroll on down, A, B, Candy Cone. I do have a zip. So there's the zip of it. Um, when I zip, I just use the Windows zip thing, desktop, desktop reveal. I'll open up uh, the NFT directory here. So that's the NFT directory. And I sit on Candy Cone, right click and say send to compressed folder. That's it. There's no problem. It's like so thank you know, so thankful that it's just a bloody zip file, you know, <laughs> and not 57 steps of crap that Apple puts you through to post an app on their store. You know, seriously, 57 steps to post an app on the Apple App Store <laughs> versus one step, zip it and upload it, and you got an NFT. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. So uh, anyway, we do have the zip file, and so that's good, which means we can come back here and just say, hey, please upload the zip file. And we go find that zip file. It was called candycone.zip. As soon as you put in a zip here, it then asks you to upload a cover image. So I click that, I go into my candy cone directory, into assets and say, this is it right here. And then we preview, preview. 
And there it is. Nice. Uh, by the way, the preview expanding like this won't work. That's what it looks like. It just, for some reason, jumps up to the top. But expanding normally, uh, like once it's minted into an NFT, it will be fine. I'm not sure if it's broken. The expand is broken and <laughs> everything. <laughs> but it seems to be broken for us, but it's been broken on all of them. So anyway, this is Candy Cone. Take a good look. Make sure you've got your spelling right, that there's no spelling errors and stuff. Um, there's the final minting of the object, and here's how much it costs, 0 0.08 Tez. So this is something like 30 cents or something like that. That's how much it costs to mint, 30 cents. So if I give you a Tez, that'll, that means you can mint, you know, five to 10 of these things uh, and still even buy um, the Zim NFT. So that's what we're hoping you do. Yeah, so, as, a, as a payment for the fact that we're paying you five bucks. Okay, come in, get that Zim NFT. Uh, it's for you, the, the users of Zim. We we want you to get that NFT. So there we go, and I'm going to say, yeah, I think that all looks pretty good. Done everything right. Okay, and I hit mint. So as it mints, it's going to wait for a little while, and a message is going to come up and say you need to sign. So there's the request to the Kakai wallet. You can hit open there if you don't already have the wallet open. If you already have the wallet open, this will pop up in the wallet that you have open. Uh, what this is doing is it's signing it and saying, yeah, I confirm. I'm going to pay 0 0.07 or, 7 or whatever. Now it's, uh, it's going through its processing here. So on the left, here's some stuff that I bought, some stuff that I've minted, et cetera. And if you are starting to, like if you get your own money and you have more than just a Tezo in your wallet, um, then start buying other people's as well. I'm sure you'll find others that you like. What I would do is say, start with 200 bucks in your, in your wallet, start buying things, start selling things, start buying things, and you're fine, you still have 200 bucks in your wallet because it kind of, it balances out a little bit and hopefully that starts to grow. It has for us, in two months, it's grown to $2,000. Um, so that's great, but much of that has been put back into buying other, you know, others, um, which is nice, you know, for the community. Alrighty, yes, yeah, so I'm still at, uh, by the way, all this is open record. Um, it's kind of weird, <laughs> but all your finances, all the all the blockchain transitions, etc. You can see anybody's finances, anybody's blockchain, uh, how much people have made from their art, all that is on the blockchain. It's all visible. And there are tools. I've got some tools here that allow me to analyze various things like that. Okay, so uh, those tools can be found in the FAQ on Hicketnunk, and you can look through that or just you know, start asking people and we can share some tools as well. So now it's finally said, I've minted 10 candy cones. Yay, okay. And I close my wallet, probably don't need that again. There's nothing here. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. No message or anything. There might've been a little message up here, but it's gone. Uh, and now I take a look at manage assets because so we're not quite done yet, but there it is. Very nice. That's good. Actually, I wanted, uh, these are the uh, puzzles that I had mentioned, and I wanted to get four of non puzzles before I'm going to start the puzzles again. So that looks pretty good in there. Let's click it. Um, it's a hit and miss as to whether this will even show up or how long it's going to take to show up. Uh, it usually shows up eventually uh, because it's coming from interplanetary file system and people are a little bit used to that. Uh, <laughs> usually it shows up. Sometimes um, it might go for a little spell where it's out of, out of sync or something. It just won't show up. But I think usually it shows up. And here's our full screen. So we click full screen and that's looking pretty good, huh? What's nice is the animation is so smooth compared to the animated GIF, compared to a video of this. You know, it's just really, really crisp and clean. We've got Retina. Um, so that's Zim Retina. And that means we've got um, Retina Pixel sort of stuff happening here. This is cache, so it won't quite be as sharp as it might have been, but uh, generally it's, you know, it's, 
pretty nice. Okay, so what we're left with though is it's currently not for sale. So what we need to do is swap. It's a funny word, but we swap and we'd say how many of these we're going to give to the blockchain to, to put up for sale in a sense, to swap and somebody else will then collect that and the money will come back to me. <laughs> What's neat is they actually buy it for however much I put here uh, to actually get uh, royalties on that as well. <laughs> so you'll see that in there, funny, huh? Um, so here, swapping, it's asking for how many. And traditionally, I've been putting up five for a certain price for two Tez. So five of them up for two Tez. That means I've got five on hold, which means if everybody really likes it and it starts to go crazy and, you know, people are all of a sudden buying and selling for 30, 30 Tez and stuff, you know, $300, $400, this happens, then I've got five that I can start selling for that much which may be a little, <laughs> little bit greedy. Maybe I've got too many on hold. I'm still still learning this thing, but basically what I'm doing is if, if the five sell, then I'll release more. And I don't always release it at a higher price. Sometimes I'll release more at the lower price. Um, you know, uh, or if other people want to start selling theirs, I kind of wait for a bit and let them. That's called secondary market. So anybody, if, if, if five have gone, those people that bought it can then start selling. Well, they can at any time start selling it. But uh, if, if they're still mine for sale for two, they probably won't sell it because <laughs> they just bought it for two. Why would they sell it for two? Um, so they wait for a bit. And as soon as all those are sold, then they can start selling for five because they'll be the cheapest. Right. So that's the idea. Anyway, there's our swap. We hit swap. Oh, I shouldn't have closed Kukai because it's going to Kukai again. This is, you sit here going, what's going on? What's going on? Well, it's because you've got to open your wallet. So they've um, improved that by giving a message here. So anyway, open that wallet again. Up will pop the message. And you confirm. And that's confirming the swap at uh, two each. So I currently have 10 of these. They belong to me. But now I've just sort of swapped. I've given away five, potentially given away five, if um, somebody comes and buys it. So that's it. I put five of those up for sale. There are other ways to do that too. Like you can auction. Uh, the Hicket Nunk doesn't really do the auction, I don't think. But um, objktobject.com or whatever, or .io, it does auctions where you can say, hey, for this amount of time, I'm going to auction this. OpenSea does auctions. That's a different blockchain, though. So this is Tezos. OpenSea is um, Ethereum. Uh, and there is a way to get, there is a way to get interactive works on Ethereum. It's called uh, Beyond NFT. And I'm about to do that. It'll probably have roughly the same system where you zip up the file and upload it to Beyond NFT. And that's on Ethereum, which means it'll eventually show up on OpenSea, which is just an aggregator. It it takes any NFTs on Ethereum and, and it shows them. Okay, so uh, there we go. We have, uh, it won't show up quite yet, but I'll refresh here. Refresh. And there we go. So now it says five. There are five up for sale. Collect for two Tez. You could come here if you had two Tez. And you could hit that button and go through, sign it with Kakai. And you would own one of these. Um, which is good. <laughs> so maybe come in and do that. Okay. And I've got a history here of what just happened. I just swapped five at two Tez. Oops, this is me again. Sorry, click that. Yeah, so all is good. I really love these. These are just these are just beautiful. So somebody's bought this and put it up for 60 Tez. They're hoping that they can get 60 Tez for this. And if they do, I'll get royalties. They they get the 60 Tez, which is, you know, obviously nice for them. Uh, but these are just beautiful. And you can come in here and get one too. I'm gonna just mint some more uh, shortly. Isn't it a nice combination of the op art and uh, let's let's do this to fruition and then we'll we'll uh, let you guys go. Maybe you have other things you want to do. Maybe you want to make an NFT, huh? Oh, that's gonna go up here. There. And where does this one go? Uh, here. On that one. Oh yeah. 
Yay! We did it. Very nice, huh? So those ones have, have sold quite nicely. Once again, there's a tool um, that I use called Hen Gallery. It, you just go here and put in anybody's wallet address and it will tell them all their sales and it tells how much royalties they've made, all that kind of stuff. So here's the things that are up for sale. This one's not up for sale because somebody bought it and they're not selling it. So whoever bought this one has put it up for 50 Tez, 60 Tez. This one's not for sale. Whoever bought that isn't selling it. Uh, this one, they put it up for five Tez. I'm not sure if that was me. No, it's somebody else. Anything that is, anything that's red or orange is somebody else putting up one of these books right here for 40 Tez. Uh, there's that 100 Tez one for, for um, the philosopher. And most of these other ones, there are two, but some of them have gone up to tens and eights because people have been buying them for that. And so when I when they when I finished buying them, I would put it up for sale for that as well. I have other peoples that I'm putting up for sale. So these are pieces that I have collected that I've put up for sale and hoping that somebody else buys. That's called the secondary market. This is the Zim one. Is this the Zim? Let me just check. So that tool, um, yeah, it is. So this is the Zim NFT that you can get. That tool links through to objkt.com, uh, which is similar to Hicket Nunk, but has a slightly different interface into it. And this is the Zim NFT. It represents the whole Zim framework as an NFT but it's also just a little interactive piece here that you can play around with. And there's some information about Zim that is passing on by. But basically this represents Zim stored as an NFT. All right, that's a great place to end. This has been a Zim Explore. I hope you like that, you know, isn't this neat, all of this stuff? Uh, I love NFTs, and like I said, this has been a Zim Explorer. Come on in to zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord, and you can talk to us about stuff. Uh, we'd love to help you make some interactive NFTs. And like I said, we're happy to spot you some uh, some moolah, some tezos or a tezo, and uh, with the hopes that you'll get started with NFTs. All the best. Have a great day or night. I'm Dr.